poetically speaking. Um, perspectivity, perspectival consciousness, as I've already said, that's really what Einstein is doing. That's what he is elaborating. And perspectival consciousness is solar consciousness. The, the, the solar ego is implicated here. The, the individual egoity or subjectivity uh, becomes a key player within Einstein's physics because of the, the way that different perspectival reference frames come to be uh, uh, absolutely central to the way that his theory operates. And lo and behold, you get this black hole thing coming out of his equations, right? Where you have a star, or at least this is the story that we're told, right? A, a supermassive star. You can think of it as like a, 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 an ego that's, you know, super inflated, collapses into itself underneath its own density, its own weight, its own pressure, so as to become... A, a singularity, which is then surrounded by an event horizon, which is impenetrable. Light cannot get out. Consciousness cannot get out of the boundaries of the event horizon in the same way that Kantian perspectival consciousness can no longer get out of the bounds which separate the phenomenal and the noumenal. It's the exact same thing. But what's interesting here is that with the singularity, we can begin to see how to kind of move through perspectival consciousness. Not by banging our heads against the, the walls of the event horizon, as it were, uh, the walls which separate the, the phenomenological realm from the noumenal realm, but rather by going inward, sinking into that singularity at the core of the black hole, at the core of perspectival consciousness, we kind of come out on the other side, as it were, into counter space. So counter space. Counter space is an idea that was originally developed by Rudolf Steiner. It was later picked up by Nikola Tesla with his kind of uh, etheric electromagnetic theory, which is a story for another day. But either way, you've got this idea here um, within black holes as well, it would seem, just in a kind of uh, roundabout sort of way that the collapse into the singularity then results in a, a, a kind of expansion on the other side, right? With this idea of like a white hole or something like that, or that, you know, once you go through the singularity of the black hole, it pops out into a, an alternate universe or something like that, which is, you know, very science fiction-y, of course, but the reality is that all of this is very science fiction-y because relativity is science fiction, but... In any case, um, this is uh, really interesting here archetypally because if we look at the different stages of this process, what we see, uh, we, we see the different stages of the alchemical great work just with the order shifted a little bit. You start with the, the, the golden sun, which then becomes the, the red giant, right? And then that becomes the black hole, and then on the other side you get the white hole, right? So you've got this um, yellow, red, black, white. Um, the order is different within the, the alchemical great work, but it's the same thing. It's the same archetypal um, idea is expressing itself through a different kind of medium, through the uh, the, the the imaginal the, the imagination of uh, physics. Uh, which is which is just great because of you know the the irony.